life comes and goes Make it last, best slow your road They don't take it as a choice But you gotta know that today's the day This is the day that the Lord has made Good morning, everybody. What's up? I'm so glad you're here after a wonderful Wednesday. I know I was like sunburnt and really tired even though I didn't do anything. So I'm just glad you're here this morning. Um, let's stand for worship. We're gonna do this cool thing where I'm gonna sing a line and you're gonna sing with these guys in the second line. So kind of like a fun little echo. I know you're tired, but I know you can do it. So let's sing together. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King. Forever, for he is good, he is above all things, his love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. The life that's been reborn, his love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever, God is faithful. beyond the stars those dazzling heights too vast to climb I got so high to fall so far but I found heaven as love swept low my heart beating my soul breathing I found my life when I laid it down, upward falling, spirit soaring, I touched the sky when my knees hit the ground. What treasure waits within? scars this gift of freedom gold can't buy I bought the world and sold my heart you traded heaven to have me again my heart beating my soul breathing I found my life when I laid it Spirit soaring, I touch the sky when my knees hit the ground. 
Let's all pray together. Dear God, thank you for letting us come here to worship you. Thank you for a good time yesterday, a good break. Uh, help us these next few weeks. Please with Zach as he comes to speak to us. Uh, may we learn something more about you. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. I give thanks to God for Zach Leslie for two reasons, or well, at least two reasons. First, uh, in watching him lead uh, the Milligan Vespers group, I have uh, been inspired for my continuing vision, my continually developing vision for campus ministry at Milligan, and that is to create authentic community and worship for students by students. And I so appreciate the way Zach has uh, led others in pursuing that. Uh, as Vespers pursues that, and I hope uh, as time goes on we all pursue that together. The second reason I give thanks to God for Zach is because he is a servant leader. Um, I observe him leading from up front, as he will do today, but I've had the opportunity to observe him leading from the back of the room as well, and I think that's the true measure of a servant leader. So, we're allowed to clap. Welcome Zach Leslie. So before I get started, uh, if you can turn to someone close to you or around you and tell them something awesome about your wonderful Wednesday. Go. I love to hear that. I did have fun. Chet around at the spot. All right, well, I hope you all had a wonderful, that's a bad joke, wonderful Wednesday. Uh, so let's get into it. I got a B minus. Now, depending on the context, a B minus can be good or bad. For example, I got a B minus in first year Greek, and I consider that my crowning achievement here at Milligan. Yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but this B minus was in sixth grade intro to art. So not as great. Every single drawing, every single painting, every single bowl of clay was just awful. I remember bringing art projects home and just taking them straight to the trash or stuffing them in the top drawer of my dresser so that I would be the only one who knew that it existed. I also stuffed that report card in the top dresser as well. I remember though having a breakthrough sophomore year of high school. Uh, this project was a painting project, so not really my strong suit, but we were tasked to paint the same logo, whether it be a business or a sports team or something like that, four different times using different color schemes. Now there may be a official term for what this kind of project is, I'm not sh aware of it or sure of it. Uh, so I just painted the Chicago Blackhawks logo four different times in four different color schemes. And was it amazing? No, probably not at all. But to me, I thought it should have been hung in the Louvre for everyone to see for all of time. I still got a B on it though. <laughs> so as good as I thought it was, my art teacher uh, was not as forgiving. Because painting, drawing, pottery, sculpting, it's just awful for me and terrible for me. So I kind of wrote myself off in, in sixth grade as a non-creative type, whatever that means, right? That's all I had been taught creativity was. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, you could have expressed it in a different way. I tried band in middle school. I played trumpet and I was 13th chair out of 26 for you band people in the room. So I was not good enough that the band teacher expected anything out of me ever, but I was also not bad enough that he felt bad for me either. So it was a balance I was trying to strike. But eventually I gave up band, I gave up on our class, I just wasn't creative. Well, that's what I thought. However, I think I was gifted with an ability to write at least when I put forth the effort into it. Uh, there are some professors in the room who have graded my writing assignments, so no comment today, please. <laughs> and generally speaking, I do love to write. My highest grades were always in English class from as young as I can remember through graduating high school. 
And I just never really saw that as useful or creative. I was kind of taught that that stuff was boring until I saw it as an outlet for grief. I lost an uncle about 10 years ago now, and in the moment, I had no clue how to process that. My family was pretty shaken up. It was a big surprise. And I was shaken up too, understandably so, but I had no idea what I was supposed to say, how I was supposed to react. So I just wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. The Notes app and I became best friends. <laughs> I was bullied pretty heavily in late middle school, early high school. So I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. And this kind of writing was an outlet for me. Those of you in the room who know me pretty well, which is honestly most of you, um, know that this writing kind of evolved rhythmically and I became kind of a hip hop artist. Uh, but that was never like for uh, like a financial revenue like stream or anything like that. You don't make money making music if no one's told you that yet. There you go. Um, but it was just an outlet for me, a way to express my creativity, a way to express grief and doubt and loss, but also joy. And the thing that was so great about this experience for me writing was there was no one to put a grade on it to tell me how valuable it was or wasn't. There was no one around to tell me if it was good or bad. Now, when I did the music stuff, that came with some of that. But for the most part, it was just me and I could just do it. And the craziest thing about this experience and the thing I was expecting, never expecting to come out of this experience was that I connected with God on a level I had never really experienced before. It was intimate, it was close, it was relational. And to be honest with you, it was also worship for me. Because on some level, I believe that creativity comes from God himself. God is the most creative being in the universe. He created each and every one of you in this room. He created the trees outside. He created the bugs that run around in the grass and the grass itself. He also created the hammerhead shark, which is just hilarious. And I appreciate God for that one. And if you've seen New Girl, you can touch the hammerhead shark between the eyes and it'll become your friend or something like that. So that's pretty cool too. And we've also been made in his image. And if we're made in his image and in his likeness, I believe that we've also been made to create. Now I know many of you in the room may be thinking that you're not the most creative people in the world, but I believe that at some level we're all capable of creativity. And I believe that when we tap into it, we see a side of God that we might otherwise miss. And of course, I believe that scripture has something to say about all this. So let's dive into scripture. I'll be in Genesis 1, 1 today. So if you have Bibles or phones or whatever and want to flip open to Genesis 1. And you probably know Genesis 1, 1 pretty well. Does anyone want to say it for me? Anyone know Genesis 1, 1? Nobody? I know that's not true. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I'll say it again. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, did you catch it? The very first thing, the very first thing that we are told about God in Scripture is that he's creative. And then in verse 3, God says, let there be light. And now you're sitting there thinking, well, that's not very creative. My guy just turned the lights on. And yeah, sure, I can give that one to you. But God's decision in verse six to create the vault or the sky, I think is pretty inventive and creative. And then in verse 11, God creates vegetation and plants, some of which are so wholesome and pure and fun to look at that there might be people in this room who have them as pets in their dorm room. Not going to comment on the people who have plants as pets, but just going to throw that one out there. And then in verse 20, I already mentioned the hammerhead shark, but God creates the, the creatures of the sea. My favorite animal is the shark, so that's personally one of my favorite days of creation. And scientists say we have yet to discover 80% of what lies in the ocean. So who knows what surprises God may have there. And now I'll admit, I do not like birds. But there's no other way to describe an eagle soaring through the air as anything other than majestic. He goes on to create the rest of the animals, some of which we may never see. But then in verse 26, he creates mankind. And he doesn't just create mankind. He creates mankind in his image. And he calls it 
very good. In Genesis 2, we see God interact with his creation. We see God plant a garden. He plants trees that are good for food. We see him intimately interact with his creation. And we even see his creativity in the way he creates the woman. Someone who could be Adam's partner, someone who could be there for Adam, but not someone who was exactly Adam, but also someone Adam could relate to and see some sort of himself in. But what does all of this creative talk in Genesis 1 and 2 really have to say for us and what it does it mean for us? Well, firstly, I think it means that we were created to create. I'm going to say the word create a lot today, so if you're over it by the end of this, I'm sorry, but it's coming. I'm sure there are people here who immediately turned, tuned out when I said the word creative. And I get that, because somewhere along the way, you got a bad grade, like in my case, you got bad feedback, or were told that you weren't creative. And I was there too, but I don't think it's that simple. Sure, you may not be an artist, you may not know how to play an instrument like the wonderful people who lead chapel for us, but when you were a kid, I know you were pretty creative. For example, for me, I would do these huge crossover events in my bedroom as a kid with my action figures. Leonardo, leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not the guy who painted the Mona Lisa, teaming up with Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, who had lost his arm in a standoff with the dog. And they would team up to battle Buzz Lightyear's arch nemesis, Zerg, and the little alien things from Toy Story. And they would battle over and over and over again for intergalactic supremacy. Now there is not a single writer in Hollywood right now that could write a movie script as creative as the one Zach did every day as a six-year-old. But at some point, and maybe you could relate to this too, I lost that. Would I still like to watch that movie? Yes, I would spend all of my stimulus check right now to watch that movie tonight. But I don't think that way anymore. I don't play that way anymore. And I don't create that way anymore. But I think if the first two chapters of Genesis have taught us anything, it's that it's still in there somewhere. Now I have a question for you. You can just answer it in your head. When was the last time you thought about God and creativity having any sort of link? For me, it wasn't often, at least naturally. I think we often tend to think of creativity as secular or non-churchy or does not belong to or in the church. It's just for the worship band. However, I, I think this line of thinking cannot be further from the truth. The very first thing, like I mentioned, we see from God in scripture is creativity. So as God's creation made in his image, created in his image, would it not make sense that we were also created with some sort of creative pulse? And when we exercise that muscle, we are acting as a living reflection of the creator who created us. And so because of this, I also believe that creativity is an act of worship. Thomas Terry, who's a rapper in the group Beautiful Eulogy and also an author, in his book Creativity for the Christian Life, he says it this way, every act of worship in its essence is an act of creativity. Actually, flip that. Every act of creativity in its essence is an act of worship. So creativity is us exercising a gift that God gave to us and is us actively tapping into something that is close to his nature and close to his heart. And we see this creativity displayed throughout all of scripture, right? In the way that the ark was built, the way that the psalmists write in the book of Psalms, the way that it's structured, formatted, and the language they choose to write in, and countless other times. And hear me out, I'm not saying that your creativity is only worship or good if it involves writing the next Hillsong smash hit. I'm not saying that your creativity is only worship or good if it's written about in scripture. Your creativity, no matter how it manifests itself or shows up, is God-given and beautiful. It doesn't matter if it's in how you organize your clothes, the way you make playlists on Spotify, how you prep for a Bible study, how you find solutions to conflicts with friends. It's all creativity, and it's all worship. And it's a response and a reflection of the ultimate creator, God. 
And we worship in all kinds of different ways, right? I think the first two that come to mind are through song and through prayer. There's an endless amount of ways we can worship. And that's how I think about creativity as well. Creativity is limitless. I've already given a few examples of how creativity could manifest itself in ways maybe didn't even imagine. I mean, my freshman and sophomore year roommate, Ian's here, he's an engineering major, and he would start doing homework in the room, and I, he was clearly visibly stressed about engineering homework, and I, as a Bible major, was just like, that's just not my world. Uh, but I would look at some of the problems he was doing, and he could have given me a million guesses how, as how to even start that problem, and I would have never come close. But he could see it, and he could see it in a different way that I never could. One of my current sweet mates is really into Naruto. A few weeks ago, he said, Zach, 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 Kirk, come, come here, I gotta show you something. And our suite, if you've ever been in it, um, there's stuff happening in there all the time. Surprises just come out of everywhere. Um, it's really fun. So I had no idea what to expect when Chuck said this to me. I walk in, and he turns his laptop to me, and it's this drawing of a character from Naruto. And it's a really good drawing. And I had never known that about Chuck, that Chuck was even capable of that. It was just really, really cool to see. I have a friend from back home in Indiana who I played basketball and baseball with. He's a DJ now. Not really sure what that entails. But he drops these crazy remixes of popular songs like Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo on SoundCloud. And they're great. And I sit there and I wonder, how did he even begin to think about this, to put this together? And one of my sisters just absolutely loves to rearrange her room all the time. And as a family, we always know when this is going on because when it happens, it's like an earthquake of about an eight on the Richter scale that just goes throughout our whole house. She's moving furniture around and everywhere, her bed, her chair, her record collection, all this sort of stuff. And when I walk in to check on her after, afterwards, I think, wow, I would have never thought to put that there or to move this here or anything like that. But I tell all of these stories to tell you that your creativity knows no bounds. It's limitless. It comes from straight from God himself. In Genesis 1 and 2, God creates some really interesting creatures that look like they belong to Pokemon more than they do real animals. Google the star-nosed mole or the sarcastic fringe head in your free time today if you'd like a good laugh or a good scare even. But beyond just those animals too, I mean, his creativity is evident everywhere in the way that our bodies work and how they function, in the way rain works, just as crazy, the way our planet rotates, the way the stars align, it's all evidence of his creativity. And creativity, as displayed by the God we serve, can be expressed in millions of different ways. And I don't know what creativity looks like for you. I don't know how you express it or how you will choose or learn to express it. However, I do know that your creativity will be uniquely you and a reflection of the God who created you. Ephesians 2.10 tells you that you are God's handiwork created by Christ Jesus. This could also mean something along the lines of craft work or artwork. You are a direct result of God's creativity and you have that creativity inside of you too. So my challenge for us this week, for the rest of this week, is to find the time to do something creative. I don't think it matters really if anyone sees it, hears it, reads about it, knows about it. But I hope that we would use this gift of creativity that God has given us to continue to reflect the God of the universe in all that we do. Let's pray. God, we thank you uh, for all that you're doing on this campus. We thank you for wonderful Wednesday yesterday and the chance to recharge, reconnect, um, and get ready for the rest of the semester. God, I pray for everyone in this room right now that we would use the gift of creativity that you have given us 
to be a a reflection of you in the world today. And help us, for those of us who don't know how to express our creativity yet, what that will look like and how that will look like when we walk next to you. God, so once again, I just thank you for Milligan, for everyone here today, for everyone outside these walls. And I pray that you would help us finish strong the rest of the semester. Amen. thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to gather, to sing, to be in your presence. Uh, We're grateful for Zach and his leadership on this campus and the wonderful message that he brought to us today. And I hope that we accept his challenge to find ways to be creative and let us go from this place and have a wonderful day. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys are dismissed.